Good afternoon and welcome to the College of Complexes. My name is Tim and I'd like to supremely welcome all of you on the top night out here. So, you know, I would like the College of Complexes consists of the following format. First we have a brief announcements period, then we have our speaker who will then speak for up to an hour depending. Then we have a question and answer period, and then we have our infamous rebuttal period where each and everybody may speak. Usually it's about four minutes each. And at the end, the speaker will get the last word. My name is Tim. I'll be running the camera tonight and basically kind of help moderating along with Andy Anderson. And uh, we look forward to all of you uh, participating. Let's give a warm welcome for applause to uh, our speaker, Kimbo Leiden. All right, well, uh, I'll get you started. And you're all set, sir. Thank you. Well, I'm going to take you. Hi. Hi, folks. Um, my name is uh, Dr. Kim Ladian, and I'm a psychiatrist and a scientist. I spent many, many years doing basic brain research and before going to uh, uh, medical school in psychiatry. And Safe Haven is actually a program that I've lived with pretty much all of my life. My uh, uh, parents, and many of you would have parents who were in the Depression, and so um, they would always talk about, uh, you know, the CCC and WPA and how it helped people get jobs. They also talked about on a hot summer day like today, people would sleep in the parks or on the beaches and wouldn't have to worry about uh, getting hit on the head. It had nothing to do with money, it had everything to do with values. And so to the extent that, you know, we, we may have advanced in some ways, but we def not necessarily advanced in terms of values. If we could get back to some of those, we could in fact achieve a gain-free, drug-free, full employment economy by the year 2020, two years from now. And I'll explain exactly how. It's very much like landing a man on the moon by the end of the decade. Um, with the right tools, um, just like you needed a Saturn C5, um, with the right tools, not only can you do it, you need to do it if we're going to build a better world for everyone. So, the Chicago Project uh, talks about safe haven. Uh, GF stands for the Global Energy Independence Program. We'll come back to that. But basically, it's a very simple equation that can provide clean, renewable energy and it saves, as uh, Andy was saying, two to three trillion, with a T, dollars annually, which can do a hell of a lot of profound good. And in fact, to be specific about it, I have written to uh, Xi Jinping and others saying, if you use some of that money um, with the P5, including Russia and China, uh, for a peace paradigm, uh, the last uh, thing there, um, you could, in essence, um, give North Korea clean, renewable energy. Uh, they, they could have all the nukes in the world and never have in the energy independence, and so give them energy independence. And if it can help to promote, uh, prevent war so much, the better. And if it works in North Korea, it could work in Iran. And if it works in Iran and North Korea, we're on our way to peace on Earth by 2020. Uh, 2030. I'll sh uh, so, um, well, let's see. Um, there we go. All right, I'm just going to very briefly explain that uh, a lot of what I'm doing um, has been in the last six years, um, and I'm, the reason this is here, what, uh, my wife Sylvia and I have known each other for over 50 years. My mother was our second grade Sunday school teacher, and she was murdered um, six years ago. Um, and uh, she had been over-radiated and developed leukemia, but with monoclonal antibodies, um, we were able to treat the leukemia, but the people ignored her advanced directives and watched her seven days as she slowly drowned to death on her own secretion, so, uh, which could easily have been safe. So I tell people, Sylvia didn't die of leukemia, she died of arrogance, stupidity, and systematic abuse of power, what I call acids. But then so have millions around the world over the years, you know, acids is probably one of the most lethal things in the world. There are plenty of them around, and they tend to do things like kill people, and uh, we need to get beyond, beyond that. So a lot of this is dedicated to Sylvia, but it's also all the other victims of acid over all of the centuries, and 
you know, people were talking about this. So I was going to start with what I call if prevent, which stands for investigate, fix, and prevent. I mentioned that I'm a uh, physician as well as a scientist. We have uh, what's called uh, CQI, continuing quality uh, improvement in medicine. And so if, with all of the problems we have, we investigate them, we fix them, and above all, in the end, we try to prevent them. But that's not just true in medicine, it's true in any area of society. If you go from politics as usual, if you go from ideology to good science, you can actually solve a lot of problems. Pretty much everybody here has one of these. Didn't exist 20 years ago. And if it did, it didn't look like this. Maybe it was two tin cans and a string. So the point is science you know, allows us to do many things that would not otherwise be possible. So I'm going to come back to, if prevent, I'm going to come back to my Global Energy Independence Program, safe haven, but this is just something of a preview. So if prevent, so four tools to help break the cycles and fix the system. So if you take if prevent, it's investigate, fix, and prevent, and you apply it not just in medicine, but in government, in law, in uh, every area of society, you investigate problems, you fix them, but above all, you prevent them so you don't go in circles, you go forward. It, not only can you do wonderful things, um, that's what science does. That's why each one of you has one of these and so many other things. That's why Sylvia, after 19 months of literally living together in hospital rooms, within a few days of starting monoclonal antibodies, which were brand new at the time, her cancer cells were gone, her vital signs were stable. So again, she didn't die of leukemia, she died of acids. And so we still have to treat acids. So uh, super epic is, you know, everybody sent something maybe by FedEx, and just like FedEx can track a, pay, uh, a package anywhere in the world, if prevent allows you to track the uh, a problem, where it is in terms of getting fixed. So you can't hide it under the uh, under the rug. You know you can't have a Laquan McDonald or you know or Sylvia or you know any other problem. You have to actually fix it, and you have timelines, etc. And if you solve that, if you apply that to problem solving in bureaucracies of any sort, certainly including government, you can make sure that it's no longer acceptable just to say, oh, we're working on it. No, nope. okay, here's the deadline. Here's your timeline. Fix it. Um, and move on. So safe haven, I started to talk about, again, is this community service core like the old CCC or WPA, and it provides jobs for people in the private and the public sector. So for instance, the first, and at this point only, um, uh, community service core program uh, today took 15 moms from Lacer homes, a few blocks from here, and taught them uh, in a 10 week program to be daycare assistants. So at the end of 10 weeks, they not only had a job, they had a license, they had a place for their own kids, and they had parenting skills. That's a win-win. Um, we can do the same thing. So what I'm focusing on, Chief Judge Tim Evans for Cook County and I uh, spoke a while back, and we agreed we'd start with the after-school program. So if you have after-school programs for all the kids, so they're, you know, they're in school, after school, they're doing their homework. They're not out using, you know, getting involved in gangs and drugs. They're not the lookouts for the adults. They're not the army that used to be. They're they're actually getting an education. What a shock! Um, that, so that will be what we want to do by this fall on a bipartisan basis. Again, this has nothing to do with politics as usual. It's uh, um, it's it's good government. And so I mentioned uh, this is all in my safe haven book. The sad part about this is that this is the 25th anniversary edition. So at the back of it, everybody from Jim Edgar through Carol Mosley Brown has signed off on these. Again, nothing to do with politics, everything to do with good government. Yes, Tell sir? us how we can get a copy of your book. Well, if people want to have a few copies, I, uh, I, uh, it's 25 bucks, but I'll give 20, uh, 20 for anybody who has it. That's only going to cost that much. Pretty big book. It costs that much to actually do. I'm, I'm a man of profit. It's just it uh, it happens to do that. But or uh, people could leave their names and numbers, and I can also help. But uh, uh, Amazon.com is the other place. You can simply go on and get it that way if you want. Okay. But safe haven. And uh, so anyway, the bottom line is that. Uh, in the same way, uh, having community service corps for everybody coming out on probation and parole, if you made sure that everybody uh, had a job, 
showed up. He wasn't using alcohol or drugs and wasn't involved in, in gang crime. If the only thing we do, and this is in the handouts uh, that are in the back there too, I, I end uh, this part, I say it's the only thing we do is to have the after school programs for the kids and the work programs, mandatory by the way, for everybody on probation and parole, we will reduce gang crime and murders in Chicago 50% by next year. It's that important. You don't have to be a physician to realize that's a good thing, but it's, it's also good science. So if the only thing we did this year, and we can do it on a bipartisan basis in Springfield, is have the after school programs for the kids and the work programs for the adults. Um, and there are some political folks that I'm already talking to, um, to, you know, to do this on bipartisan. So um, that's what we're hoping. The final thing there is GEP, again, this Global Energy Independence Program. I'll tell you a little bit about that. Um, Sylvia died on February 4th of 2012. Um, instead of taking the case to court, I actually went to Cardinal George. Um, and within five minutes, there was a guy, the chief conciliator, a uh, guy, Ralph Bonacorsi, wonderful, wonderful human being. He, uh, within five minutes of talking with Cardinal George, Cardinal George did exactly the right thing. He said, talk with the sisters, settle the case, fix the system. That's the we then. Um, I also said, look, I'll give you, you know, uh, Cardinal George at that time, now it's Cardinal Zubich, and Pope Francis, um, the simple equation underlying the Global Energy Independence Program. By the way, it's two to three trillion dollars a year. It's nice that it provides clean, renewable energy, but it's even nicer <laughs> that it is saving all this money that could be used for that peace paradigm I was talking about before. So that was 2012. I also approached uh, Bill Gates' uh, lawyers. And at the time, I thought it was a joke. I, I said, you wouldn't think it would be so hard to give two to three trillion dollars a year away. Go figure. You know, so in 2012, it was something of a joke. It's no longer a joke in 2018. Everybody from, you know, as I say, uh, at this point, everybody from, uh, from Trump to Hillary to even Bernie to even Jill Stein, so I'm, I'm not proud. All of them have been offered the Global Energy Independence Program. In fact, with everything going on in Korea, I approached the folks at General Electric because guess what? They're the people who build things, and they could, you know, they could have the patents on the generators and uh, for the installation and maintenance of these things. They'd make billions with a P annually. So you would think they would be mildly interested in the equation. Their bright idea is, okay, tell me the equation over the phone. <laughs> if, if the NSA listens to phones, so does uh, China and Russia. I said, look, I'll fly anywhere and, and share it with you, but I'm not going to share it over the phone. So we're still talking, talking about that. But, uh, you know, so assets come in many forms. Arrogance, stupidity, and systematic abuse of power. Unfortunately, they tend to run the world um, more often than not. And, uh, and if you want to talk about wars, you were talking imperialism before, you know, you, you can figure out how it is. So if you want to design a win-win world, a win-win world, and by the way, Johnny Van Neumann, the mathematician who came up with it, uh, was doing this, we worked on the, uh, the atom bomb, but, uh, you know, this was right after World War II that he came up with uh, non-zero-sum game theory. And uh, so that's wonderful. Mathematically, he can prove that win-win strategies always, in the long run, outperform lose-lose or win-lose strategies. So there's a very good reason why you want to use them. But there was this guy 2,000 years ago who uh, said, do unto others as you would have done unto yourself. He was articulating win-win game theory 2,000 years ago. So, and, and answers killed him, too. So I mean, it, it, this is nothing new in the world. It's just that it's time to actually do it. And again, just as we could send land a man on the moon within a decade, so too we could design a win-win world. And two to three trillion dollars a year can help to do that. And safe haven. If the only thing we do is the, you know the after school programs and the uh, and the, the job programs, um, we will have gone a long way within this next year towards the goal. Um, what happened was it crashed, but it's coming back. Okay, bear with me a minute here. Just basically what happened is we had a... No, it's just the computer sometimes gets a little bit overheated or something like that. This shouldn't have happened, but we had a crash 
on his PowerPoint. Yeah. So why don't you just keep talking? Sure. And she died. So computers and that way are sort of like people. They, you know, we, we crash all the time too. It's yes. being temperamental. Yeah, well, people are tend to all the time, so go figure. Uh, by the way, I did mention, but many of you may have the handouts already. Uh, I think uh, I, I made copies of the last uh, page, but the uh, the handouts have the slides in it. So I, I'm I'm pleasantly delighted, and congratulations to you folks on having, you know, such a good audience. I, I know my brother and uh, and significant other are are here, but I thought so. There might be three of us, so it's good to see that you all here. So God bless you for that, by the way. All right, so uh, it'll, it'll we're be gonna, coming we'll back get up. to it in a minute. But uh, so the Global Energy Independence Program, as I say, can provide clean, renewable energy. I've offered it to everybody from. Uh, uh, at this point, Trump and Hillary and Bernie and Jill Stein. Now I've offered it to Xi Jinping and uh, and Putin. I say the peace paradigm. If, if they use it as leverage, and what we do is basically say to all the countries in the world, we'll give you this global energy independence program. We'll set up the programs for you. Um, in return, you're gonna you're, you're gonna play nice. You're gonna stop. You know, uh, you're, you're going to stop uh, uh, hate speech, you're going to stop uh, funding terrorism, and you're going to always work for the win-win way. I'm glad Jim knows this. Yeah, um, we're going to be, just another second to pull this up. Like I said, you think uh, Microsoft could fix some of these common problems, but uh, they uh, do all right. We'll be right back in, uh, on track in just a couple of minutes here, please. Um, I have a quick question for you while we're waiting up. You said you had a, a universal energy program that was global, global Energy Independence Program that provides clean, renewable energy and it saves two to three trillion with the T annually, not all together, annually. And that can do profound good around the world. <laughs> all right. Um, <coughs> We will be probably. I'll probably have a few questions for you on that stuff. I could imagine. But you know, we can put it up. Which one? Keep going. One more. Two more. One more. Yeah. Okay. That's what you're talking about. And let's get back to it. Okay. So again, global energy independence program. So what I wrote to Xi Jinping um, and Putin is okay. North Korea, all the nukes in the world can't give North Korea energy independence or economic independence, but the Global Energy Independence Program can. Every country in the world can be basically energy independent. But in return for that, we want everybody to play nice and the P5 basically enforce so we can denuclearize safely, peacefully, not only Korea, North Korea, but also Iran and if we can do it with those two, not by ourselves. I mean, Trump would be nowhere without Xi Jinping in terms of Korea. It's, it, they're 90% of their trading. So if it wasn't for Xi Jinping, we would have nuked them long ago. But anybody who remembers anything about World War II, it's not just Neville Chamberlain. Joe Stalin can tell you from personal experience, appeasement never works. So we were talking about you know, dropping the bomb on Hiroshima for a few hundred thousand people died. But if we'd had to invade Japan, it could have been up to 25 million, or, or many, many millions, five, six, ten, um, not just Americans, but Japanese and others. So, you know, so a motto of safe haven is a penny of prevention is worth a dollar of cure. And that's literally true in terms of the prevention-oriented programs. It's also true in terms of war. One nuclear bomb on, on Seoul can ruin your entire day. So you know, so if we can prevent that um, and get get the the goal of a denuclearized, and basically look at China over the last 30 years. You know, they've gone from a Stalinist. You know, Mao killed. You know, Hitler killed 20 million. Um, Stalin killed 30 million. Mao has the record on 70 to 80 million. Um, you know, so so cap, capitalism has all lots of faults, and we'll get back to that. But it's it, it, but but 
communism hasn't done too well either, I mean, in terms of killing people. So we need to find a win-win way. And interestingly, Xi Jinping, Putin, you can say, is a kleptocrat, but Xi Jinping is the real deal. His, uh, his dad was uh, arrested and imprisoned multiple times under Mao. And the first thing he did, Xi Jinping, when he got elected to as, uh, as president, was go to the statue of a guy called Ding, uh, Ding, Deng Zhan Xiaoping, who famously said, it doesn't matter if a cat is white or black as long as it catches mice. If he was in Could North Korea, just for a they, both his dad and Deng Xiaoping would have been tortured and murdered long ago. So, you know, so, you know, Xi Jinping knows full well what, what totalitarian Stalinist communism looked like. And, and so it, it, it's, it's sort of like slavery in the South. It had to come out sooner or later, and they may have called themselves a democracy, but with slavery, it was an affront to the human nature. So, you know, the fact that we've come beyond that is a wonderful thing. So there is progress. We can make more progress. But it's not, Trump couldn't do any of this alone. He wouldn't be where he is now if it wasn't for Xi Jinping. And the same with Iran, he'll be nowhere without Putin. And then, you know, Syria, all that. I mean, so it's cooperation. And the technical term is win-win cooperation versus lose-lose competition. It's like a family. Everybody can bicker and fight, or you can work together. And the more you work together, the functional family, that's what you do. Everybody helps everybody else. And the family of man, it's about time. So, Global Energy Independence Program. So, I'll get to the Chicago Project. I say, with the Manhattan Project, we built the bomb. With the Chicago Project, we can all help build the peace. And I mean that literally. Not just here in America, but around the world. These are programs that can do it. So there are four steps that are listed there, and again, they're in your handout. The first is to gain free, drug-free, full employment economy in America by 2020. You, you, you walk the walk, and you, you know, it's not just talk the talk, but you walk the walk. We can do that, and to the extent we do it, um, we show the world that it can be done. Um, building the cyber city-state county world of the future, you can integrate win-win systems into the, that's the last page of the slide. You can integrate win-win algorithms into the um, computers, and if part of the deal of implementing a uh, global energy independence program in these countries is you're also going to integrate your cyber systems so that they're basically universal cyber systems. And just as I mentioned, with if prevent and super epic, you can't hide things under the rug. And you actually have to find real solutions it's not politics this or that. It's not, it has nothing to do with ideology. It has everything to do with outcomes. So you want to know how to fix a problem? Run a few tests, see what works best, and then keep on building on that. That's what we do in medicine every day of the year, and that's what helped Sylvia, within a few days of starting monoclonal antibodies, and then they were new. Literally, her blast cell count was zero and her virus lines were stable. She wasn't killed by the iatrogenic leukemia. She was killed by acids. I want to emphasize it because this is all about killing acids. It's all about stopping acids. What do you mean by acids? Arrogance, stupidity, and oh, systematic now we got it. abuse of power. I'm sorry, it's in here. No, actually, it's not in here because of the different slides. But arrogance, stupidity, and systematic abuse of power. I assured it to be acids. But there are plenty of them in the world. And, and, and everybody who would rather do ideology, you know, I said Hitler, Stalin, Mao, you know, for the three top folks in terms of uh, actual murdering. Now, per capita, um, Genghis Khan was probably up to per capita, but in terms of, uh, of the actual numbers of people, those three so far top the list. Um, and all, what they all have in, in common, in addition to being asses, is it had nothing to do with good science. Well, B2s maybe, but it, it, but it had a hell of a lot to do you know, with ideologies and we're better than you and, and we'll prove it by killing everybody. Um, it, 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 it's been the bane of the world and it's time to stop it. So, um, the, uh, so by sharing Global Energy Independence Program, GIA, just like they made the original agreement with Iran to denuclearize, if you tell, as I say, North Korea and then Iran, look, we'll give you clean renewable energy save you billions, hundreds of billions, tens of billions of dollars for 
Iran and North Korea, you'll be energy independent. We just want you to play nice. Stop the hate speech, stop funding terrorism, you know, and, uh, and play nice in the world. And you know, lo and behold, not only can it be done, but it needs to be done. The alternative is if, if we don't denuclearize uh, North, Korea, uh, North Korea, Trump's position, negotiating position, is extraordinarily simple. It's either to, uh, to uh, Kim Jong-un, either you denuclearize in June and July, or you and your regime are dead in August. And the reason is because he wants to set an example for Iran, and he's not going to wait for the election. So either, either you know, Trump and Xi Jinping can settle and denuclearize North Korea permanently, verifiably, and uh, and uh, and completely by August. Not they won't finish by August, but they will have got everything. They will have identified all the sites, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. If they can do that, um, the world should dance in joy because again it could be replicated in Iran and then the P5 uh, can, can share GIP with every country in the world you know, with same deals. We'll give you energy independence but we'll also give you prevent and super epic um, and we want everybody to play nice and by the way we're going to be able to monitor the whole damn thing. So th that's like building the Saturn C5. You can do it, it well within 10 years. I left two years extra. You can do it well within 10 years and um, we can start with the denuclearization of, uh, of North Korea and Iran, and that's in the real time. Uh, August, August for North Korea. Um, Trump will wait till after the election for Iran for various reasons, but it'll certainly be before 2020. And the um, uh, the day, uh, the after school programs and the work programs to close on probation and parole this August on a bipartisan basis. So all of these things can be done. Um, I say at the bottom exactly what I say. By the way, talk about you know uh, telling a book by its cover. The first, the front of the cover says safe haven, breaking the cycles towards a gang-free, truck-free, full employment economy uh, in the world uh, in America by 2020. Originally, I would put under there better late than never because it's the 25th edition, but I left that off. But on the back. It says peace on earth, and that's peace on earth as in by 2030. Totally doable, just like you can land a man on the moon with good science and good government. Not only can you do it, you need to do it. So I started with uh, Sylvia and fighting asses, and I'll end with it and dedicate, you know, the talk and and the goals of safe haven. Okay. What? what? To not only Sylvia, but all victims of ASSIS from any time and anywhere, if we can do that, we will have done some good things and the world will be a very different and better place for it. All right. Hit the uh, B button on the computer. Hit the B button. The which? B. B as in boy? Yeah, hit the B button. Okay, thank you. All right, Andy, are you ready to moderate the yeah, questions? Right there. Take, take a couple of questions. All right. right yes, sir. Um, you know, I've seen a lot of, uh, we just had here a couple of other people with, with similar promises. Uh, for example, we had a guy here about maybe two weeks ago who talked about putting the politics into some sort of social networking program, promising the same thing. And I basically just talked to him last week and he's got a somewhat of a trial version running now um, he calls the program the Igora and uh, you know do you have uh, can you just elaborate a little bit more on what the four points are oh uh, can I put that back on yeah go ahead. just hit the, hit, hit the B button again which which button hit the B button B button again okay there you all go. right so these are the four goals sequentially if you will Gain free truck free full employment economy in America by 2020. I just said if we can have the after school programs for the kids and the work programs for everybody on probation and parole this year by August, and the way we do that is to have a bipartisan contract. I mentioned the back of Safe Haven, everybody from Jim Edgar, showed you how old it is, right. through Carol Mosey Brown signed off on it on a bipartisan basis. Nothing to do 
with politics, everything to do with good government. And here's the thing, it's called accountability. So you tell Browner, you tell JB, you want you you, you want to win, then support what I call the bipartisan contract for Illinois, which basically well, these four points. And by the way, I said a penny of prevention is worth a dollar of cure. If we reduce gang crime, drugs, joblessness in Illinois, even 10%, we save $500 million annually, 10%. We're talking 50% this coming year, 95% by 2020. That's several billion by itself, not even with GIA, because GIA will take a few years to be fully implemented. But, but this is science. This is your phone. Right. Instead of vague promises. It has nothing to do with promises. It has everything to do with outcomes. Can you elaborate on two, three, and four a little bit more? Of course. So two is building the cyber city, state, uh, country, world of the future. I want, well, I originally went to Rama on this, you know, because he has all his buddies in, uh, you know, business as well as with, uh, in entertainment, but, but said, look, I want Illinois, Chicago in particular, to be the science hub of the Midwest, um, so I want to have the cyber program started here. And this started with Sylvia with If Prevent, because again, you know, we, we, we cured, we, we treated her monoclonal antibodies, but the sisters, you know, uh, didn't know anything. So with Karen uh, Ann Quinlan, the prosecutors for, you know, uh, in New Jersey, the, the, the Attorney General and the, uh, the, the county prosecutor said, you know, you, you will be charged with murder if you don't take it to court. So the folks, and this was at St. Joe's, they, they, they knew exactly what they were doing. And I, Brown and Graham's on for 15 years there, so they, they knew exactly what they were doing. Uh, they ignored her advance directives to be full code, turned up her uh, morphine drip and watched for seven days and she drowned to death on her own secretions. Those are asses to be technical about it. Arrogant, stupid abusers of power. So to the extent that um, we have the cyber systems, it, think of it as ombudspersons. So, you know, with, with it, uh, and I started with, with the uh, president's health care. I said, look, we'll in integrate these, and the reason it's called Super Epic uh, is Epic happened to be the information electronic medical system at, uh, at president's, still is right now. So Super Epic basically says you can't put things under the rug. It goes straight to the sisters, straight to Cardinal George, and uh, in that case, and, and it's their responsibility to make sure that the problems get solved. So we'd be alive today if we'd had it. So having said that, so that's that. Take another question. Okay. okay. Just in the back there. I have a more. Um, I, uh, okay. Here. I, okay. I have a more specific question. Uh, your guide plan, the guide plan with energy. Right. What about GEIP? Okay, I got a Glo global energy GEIP. Okay, GEIP. Your GEIP plan is. How specifically are we going to stop using oil? Well, this has nothing to do with oil. It, it, it's a it, it's a new it's a new alternative energy source. Nothing to do with oil. But as I said, I literally in the last few weeks have gone to General Electric because they're the people that build these things, and, oh, and they do the cyber build the nuclear. Uh, it's not nuclear as such, but I mean, anyway, it's a new alternative energy source, and I'm happy to share it with them. What, I mean, what? this is the irony. For you know, since 2012, I told Bill Gates' his lawyers, you know, you wouldn't think it would be so hard to give two to three trillion dollars a year away. You know, go figure. But that's true. Are you going to tell us what it is? Say it again. Are you going to tell us? Can you give us a clue? I, I can't. Is it thorium? I, I, I can't hear both of you. Say it again. Is it thorium? Is it what? Thorium. Specifically what? Thorium. No, no, no and, it's, it's, and, and, and it's not pixie it. dust either. But it works. And everybody who sees it will understand it, and uh, and it will do exactly what it says. I'm a scientist, and scientists are pretty big on you know. Will, it, on, 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 will, on, will, will a jet aircraft be able to fly with that energy? Well, it's, it's, they fly now. It's, uh, it, 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 there are ways of doing anything with it, but but without getting into the details. Well, the only jet fuel oh flies airplanes. Well, you can fly a jet on electrical power no. and... I'm sorry? No. No, you can't? No priorities. Well, the, there's a new generation of lithium batteries coming out. No. Nope. 
No, okay. Well, anyway, what, what I can say is it's 90% 90 of the energy. Uh, there will be some, um, some things that uh, other sources um, will do, but 90% is pretty good. Okay, yes. Um, I, I, just heard, I just heard in the news that General Electric is going broke. So how are you proposing to foster this plan if General Electric is not well, going to Well, I told General Electric just uh, the other week, if they're not going to do it, I'll give it to uh, Xi Jinping and Putin. And I'm totally serious, I'll give it to them. Uh, the technical term is fuck them. I mean, you know, it, it's, the bottom line is before the election, I certainly intend to share it. I hope as people here, I, by the way, with uh, not just Trump, but Chuck Schumer and Nancy Pelosi would also be sharing it. And uh, the two to three trillion a year, it's, we use about a third of the energy in the world still. So that's about one trillion a year here in America. That's more than enough to fund universal health care and education on a bipartisan, and I emphasize bipartisan basis. So. Okay. We got a question here. Yes. <laughs> so so you're, you're, I hear you saying, and correct me if I'm wrong, that you'll give this energy, this new energy source to GE, but I also hear you saying that you're not going to tell us what it is, and I don't understand no, 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 no. why you're not I, telling I, us what it within, is. Within a year, everybody will, I mean, sort of like E equals MC squared, everybody will know. The problem with E equals MC squared, Einstein shared it with everybody, and the first thing everybody did was go build bombs. We were lucky enough to be first. But everybody in the world, Uncle Joe, Stalin, Tocho, they all, they were all trying to build bombs. So I like to learn from history and make sure it's used for good. And if it's shared with the P5 first, and Xi Jinping right now, I'll fly to China, and if I can't convince him in five minutes, we'll be done. Okay, but so on, my own, on my own dime, I will fly to China. You're deliberately not telling people what it is. Well, the reason is it loses all of its influence as leverage. If you, if you share it before you get everybody's agreement, they're going to play nice. They'll just go build bombs, which is exactly what they did with Eagles MC Square. So it's not forever, it's a few months. And, and then everybody will know. School kids will be able to tell us to you. Would just you like, be willing to come back in a few months and tell us what sure. it is? Be delighted. You'll know. <laughs> Every, I assure you, every one of you will be able to recite it just like you can recite Eagles MC Square. I, I assure you. If, but the difference is, you'll understand this one. I mean, I sort of understand equal limits, of course, because I'm a scientist, and, but, you know, but you'll understand this one, and you'll just say, of course. But yeah, be happy to. Next question. Okay. So it's not forever, it's just for now. Yes, sir. Okay. I, to me, yes, honestly sir. speaking, you are playing s smoke and mirrors. I don't, I don't see anything. I don't smoke. No. Okay. You know, you are smoke and mirrors. Yeah, I, I know. I'm you, know, you know, you know, you know, that's what it looks like. Okay, okay, forget, forget about your, all your secret thing. Give me the money. Give me the money amount of any project. Any project, take any project you like of yours. But Chicago only. Why Keep, Chicago only? It's the world. Any, the okay, world. The world will have. No, I don't want world because I want, I want to know the money, but how much? Here's, here's how, how much? No, 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 wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. I want, I want one, one answer only. About how much money? is going to cost and who is your source of money okay here now we're into uh, test quiz time how much did i say it's saved not cost saved i said no, and no, i would no, beat no, myself no, no, no. So, so, I don't okay, okay here you don't want to hear it you don't want to hear it so no, I, don't, I don't want to say but but i want to know the money i'm trying to say if you want to listen i'll give you the answer you're not giving tell me that. when you're ready to listen okay, and i'll okay, answer okay okay Lisa, look. general <laughs> electric if they have the patents for GIP and the contracts for it, they will make billions, would they be, annually doing this. That's enough. I mean, by the way, Such one nuclear real. bomb, as I said, is, is a couple, is a several hundred billion on Seoul. So that you're saving money, you are not spending it. That's what good science does. Yes, sir. Smoke and meet us. I want to say I understand why you're reluctant to say what the internet source is. Now, I mean, says. eventually, within a year, everybody will know. Yeah, and, you know, I'll, I'll come back when you come back. Um, and, and so I'm happy to do I that. just want to explain that there's an idea called the Jevons paradox. It's a paradox in economics that says the more uh, you grow technology to allow the efficient use of a form of energy, 
the more easily people exploit it, and that can cause right. overuse, oh. and that can cause uh, environmental hazards. Did you hear the part about clean renewable? Yes. So, so Did you hear that part? Yes. Then that's okay. Without this is a paradigm shift. I see what you're saying. This is a paradigm shift. It's not more of the same. It is a paradigm shift that will provide clean, renewable energy. And God, I hope we use, you know, tons and tons and tons of it. Because the more we do, the better it will be for the people of the world. Right. And the Tesla, Tesla the kind of wanted to do this a hundred years ago. Okay. Um, so if you want to dedicate this to Tesla along with Sylvia, I mean, talk about asses. You know, the J.P. Morgan, you know, Tommy Edison. You know, <laughs> Tesla got screwed every way you but could. How do you reconcile that with giving GE a bunch of patents when giving Edison a bunch of Because guess what? Problem. Capitalism right now, and by the way, capitalism over time will be replaced. One word, Watson. You know, just like we can, just like we can predict the weather infinitely better now than we could 20 years ago. Over time, we'll be able to predict economic cycles, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And Watson, you know, will do a much better job than any market, any human being. And and can you can integrate the win-win algorithms I was talking about? So it's a fair, equitable system for everybody around the world. Period. End of story. And by the way, Xi Jinping not only agrees with that, he calls it a community of common destiny. So you want to talk about a good guy. And, and he was there. And his dad, his dad knew quite well the prisons of China. So, you know, so he knows. And so if we can get rid of all that, and he's the one person who can do North Korea, and if he can do North Korea, we can do Iran. If we can do North Korea and Iran, we're halfway to uh, peace on Earth by 2020. Because we're going to share this with every country. They get money. The, the fellow sitting back there, they get money. Every country will save money, tons of it. And, and it'll be good for their, for their people. I have a question. Uh, yes, sir. Are you saying that as, as people shift over to using this new source of energy, it's going to be cheaper than fossil fuels? Infinite. So Infinite. That, that's where it's, 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 it's Tesla time. Okay. It's Tesla time. Right. Tesla had the right idea. I'll put it that simple. I mean, in terms of you know providing clean renewable. And by the way, there are folks at General Electric. I talked to their chief scientist. Chief scientist at General Electric and said, I'll share it to you. I just don't want to share it on the phone. To the NSA can listen in, so can China and Japan and, and uh, Russia. Even though I'm going to share it with China and Russia, you know, I want to share it with you guys first because I want you guys to have the patents because I want to see this thing get done. If I leave it to a bureaucracy, you know, we'll be talking, you know, we'll be talking uh, decades. So. So, you know, the free enterprise still works, but it can be well improved upon. So General Electric was the exact right people to go to. Other questions? I don't want to press you too much on this, whether it's cold fusion or whether it's... Uh, some all of those, so they're all fine. Zero point energy, but uh, if it is an energy that uh, can be used by anybody, uh, like I almost want to I'm waiting for warp drive myself. <laughs> warp, warp drive, okay, well that was primarily for space travel. Yeah, I know. Okay, so, uh, you just have a few if, dimensions. If you want to just throw us a bone here, um, would shorting the XLE or buying puts on the XLE be a good idea? The XLE is the energy uh, uh, index for energy companies. Energy yeah, if you buy it, 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 but I'm going to give it away. Short it, short it, right? Hmm? It would be shorting it. Or well, puts look, it, right? in, in the long run, General Electric would have more business than they ever had. So I mean, General Electric, they'll, they'll, not they'll, they'll Exxon Mobil. Like not Exxon Mobil. Exxon Mobil would be dead dust, right? Well, you know, but we're talking about moving from a carbon-based system anyway. So all these okay. folks know we're yeah, going... Not drastically... I mean, you were talking about ships and airplanes. I mean, it, 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 oil and gasoline may be around for a while, but, you know, Thank even you. there will... We'll, you know, I didn't see uh, them filling up at the gas station in Star Wars. I mean, I think they figured out new ways of doing things, and we'll do the same. That's what science does, as and always will. All right, guys. Thank you very much. And uh, anybody else? We have a couple more questions. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We're still, we still got a few minutes. Okay. okay. Uh, you got a question here? Yeah. Um, this is more uh, ethical than anything else. How can a country? I'm not, I'm not for atomic proliferation. I'm not for it. How can a country that can blow the hell out of the earth a hundred times tell a small country you cannot have atomic bombs? Easy, because appeasement does not 
work. Do you want me to repeat that? Appeasement. appeasement does not work. If you don't settle it now, and even like with Hiroshima, it might have been a few hundred thousand, it would have been millions if we had to invade Japan. Appeasement doesn't work. If you come up with nothing else while you're here, to hell with all this, appeasement doesn't work. That's why you tell small countries, be, because you want to make the world a better place. Oh, yeah, America. I'd, I'd, like to, I'd like to hear your comment on the China policy of one belt, one road. Or one what? One belt, one road. Are you familiar with it? Well, the Silk Road, the new Silk Road. The new road. Silk Road. Yeah, by the way, the Silk Road goes back thousands of years. And uh, uh, one thing, uh, uh, well, it's always been economics. But anyway, uh, Xi Jinping talks a lot about the, the Silk, silk, uh, the the new new silk, silk Road, road etc. But the bottom line is he understands. He really, really, in fact, I have his, I don't have it here, but his book, it's about as thick as this, a little thicker actually. But he cheated, he used his speeches, this is all. We do have the Chinese ambassador who came here a few weeks ago. I wish I'd known that because I'm trying to, it's, it's I, 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 right now I, I sent a letter, you know, I, I sent to Beijing and I sent to, uh, to Washington and I sent to the fellow here. We have the name of the Chinese consulate here. We'll talk at, afterwards. Uh, because, uh, you know, it, it's American know-who. I mean, you know, uh, it, it took over 20 years, you know, containers, uh, the cargo containers, took 25 years to get those in place because the unions didn't want to, it, it used to cost dollars per pound to ship anywhere. It cost pennies per pound. So even if something is a great idea, Tesla, I mean, even if something is a great idea, that doesn't mean it's going to happen because somebody's going to get screwed. So, uh, you know, you're talking about the uh, oil company and everything. Well, you know, that's part of progress. We don't manufacture many buggy whips anymore. That's good. <laughs> that is good. So, anyway. Well, you want to start the rebuttal period a little early tonight? Everybody yeah, we can start it tonight. Let's give them about five to six minutes. I think we got enough time. Well, anybody got any more questions? Or is it pretty much satisfied that our speaker answered your questions? Do you want me to throw sort of third fuel on the fire, or do you, would you guys like some fuel on the fire? I think what will happen is that after you hear the rebuttals, you're going to get the last word, and you'll be able to tell us more. All right, well, I, I, I can tell you why there's a very good chance that before the election, all this is going to happen. But And by the way, after it's shared with B5, that's exactly when you guys will know. Because it's just getting their agreement that they're going to do it. Because B5, if they did Iran, you know, without this. So anyway, so so. And everything's kind of outlined in your book a little bit more in detail, well, right? Well, Safe Haven, as I say, this is 25th anniversary right. edition. This doesn't talk about uh, the Global Energy Independence Program. Uh, the Chicago pro uh, the Chicago project, again, you know, Manhattan Project built the bomb, the, the Chicago project can build peace. And, and that that's going to be coming out in the next few months. Okay. Okay, give our speaker Let's a give hand. our speaker a hand. Thank you. Have a seat. Have a seat. Sure. Uh, that's, that's Please. Oh. If you need you a need projector or you want to open a web browser, feel free. I will be more than happy to assist if yeah. anybody wants to use it. Otherwise, just hit the B button for the blank, blank the screen. B. Just, just, just hit B. Just, just hit B. I did. B. And we can turn it on if we need to. Just, just leave it. Just leave it. Some people are sure. Okay, let's just take it off and down. Put it down on the uh, table. Yeah. We'll be all set in the now. If we, we have it if we need it. We have it if we need it. All right. Uh, we'll give each and everybody tonight about six minutes. So we got we got some time. All right. You got time, Andy? Yeah, I got time. Okay. Raj Patel, speak away. Hey, boy, Raj. Uh, my name is Raj Patel, and uh, I'm a nice guy, and you all guys know that I'm a nice guy. <laughs> and lately, I've been talking to Jesus and Allah, and 
Krishna and Abraham and you know, and we had to put serious talks, you know, this world is going crazy. So I mean, they are telling me that we sit together and figure it out new plan, you know, in next five years. You know, by 2020, we'll be having our plan. You know, sometimes, sometimes I get so upset when we get some speakers here. And uh, I mean, really, really, really. I mean, I mean, if you have a pet, if you are going to have such a big project, and if you have a patent, and if trademark office gives you the patent, do you know it has to be public? It has to be out, everybody can see it. And then other people can challenge it or uh, violating that they can do it. But here, nothing, nothing. Lots of names, lots of names, again, 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 nothing, okay? Any financial thing, nothing, okay? Any specific item, nothing, okay? What is going to produce, nothing, but it's going to be, it's going to be wonderful. I said, I, you know, what can I say? I mean, uh, you, you, you do not need this kind of guy here or anywhere, you know? I mean, I mean, I, he didn't answer any question, please, straight. He's saying that, wow, you know, it's going to be a great thing. He goes to General Motors and, you know, and North Korea and Iran and everything, and everybody has to be nice and this and this. That's nothing. You know, I, I think, I think, I think sometimes you go to some church and the speaker is not nice, you know, and he doesn't know what he's talking about. He does a better job than this. Okay? I'm sorry, guys, you know, but, you know, it sucks. Thank you. Okay. Oh, boy, right. What did you say? Do you you'll, you'll get you'll get you'll get a chance to rebut everybody at the end. Just take, just take notes. Take notes and uh, be ready. Yeah. Thank you, the Speaker. Uh, I brought a flyer today by Ted Brawl uh, in the Progressive Populist from November 15, 2017. It's called, What Would the U.S. Look Like If We Built It From Scratch? If We Reimagined Our Political System and Wrote Up a Brand New Constitution, A Lot Would Be Different. What Would the United States 2.0 Look Like? So I think it's a, a good flyer to pass around to anybody, so I'd like to present it to our speaker this evening. Um, it's a hundredth anniversary of a speech by Eugene V. Debs in Canton, Ohio, that he gave in 1918. So, uh, if the speaker will indulge me, I would like to read some of that uh, speech tonight in my rebuttal. When you have organized industrially, you will soon learn that you have, can manage as well as operate industry. We will soon realize that we do not need the idle masters and exploiters. They are simply parasites. They do not employ you as you imagine, but you employ them to take from you what you produce, and that is how they function in industry. You can certainly dispense with them in that capacity. You do not need them to depend upon for you for your jobs. You can never be free while you work and live by their sufferance. You must own your own tools, and then you will control your own jobs, enjoy the products of your own labor, and be free people instead of industrial slaves. Organize industrially and make your organization complete. Then unite in the Socialist Party. Vote as you strike and strike as you vote. When we unite and act together on the industrial field and when we vote together on election day, we shall develop the supreme power of the one class that can and will bring permanent peace to the world. We shall then have the intelligence, the courage, and the power for our great task. In due time, industry will be organized on a cooperative basis. We shall conquer the public power. We shall then transfer the title deeds of the railroads, telegraph lines, mines, mills, and great industries 
to the people in their collective capacity. We shall take possession of all these social utilities in the name of the people. We shall then have industrial democracy. We shall be a free nation whose government is of and by and for the people. And now for all of us to do our duty, the clarion call is ringing in our ears and we cannot falter without being convicted of treason to ourselves and to our great cause. Do not worry over the charge of treason to your masters, but be concerned about the treason that involves yourselves. Be true to yourself and you cannot be a traitor to any good cause on earth. So Debs is talking about how we all yearn amongst we the people in the United States of America is a government that actually represents our values in the communities, family values, worker values, everyday uh, person values. So what you're proposing this evening, and uh, respectfully, there's a lot of details lacking which kind of gave us a lot of curveballs in the Q&A session, but I, you know, I like what I heard of the general uh, outlook. The specifics, there's more to be uh, heard there, but in the general, it sounds, it sounds uh, pretty good. Not great, but pretty good. Um, I always imagine what Debs would think about a lot of these proposals at the College of Complexes and what would he uh, say and what would a lot of people of his mind think about our uh, ideas and our visions and our dreams and our cooperations and our solutions to the, the uh, challenges we face in the United States of America. I will say there, there is a big flaw in what you said tonight and that you kind of uh, you know, are apologizing for militarism. Um, we have a huge problem in this country that uh, the military industrial complex dominates the uh, the monies and the budgets that we can use for other much needed uh, areas of need uh, such as education, healthcare, human services, and the very renewable energies that uh, you propose that have been uh, begun in other parts of the industrialized world because they did make a conscious effort uh, in the government, not just amongst the people of other industrialized countries, to reduce their military spending. So uh, this, this theory that there has to be a police of the world is still uh, kind of a quackery that we hear over and over again in the United States, because you can get away with this in the United States, because we grew up here seeing all these movies where the hero always is shooting up the town and blowing everything up, but somehow unscathed comes out without a scratch at the end at the very last scene to give the one-liner holding the trophy model on one hand and the bag of money in the other hand with a big smile almost ready to eat his cheeseburger, his french fries and his milkshake. And you know, this nonsense works in the United States, but go to any other part of the industrialized world, or any other part of planet Earth for that matter, and uh, you know, there's a lot of people who think that negotiations and diplomacy and uh, common sense dialogue where there isn't this saber rattling and this antagonism and these strongly worded condemnations of a government that, yes, they might have weapons, but the main reason, which the media, of course, here never reports on, is they disagree with our policies. That's not a threat to me or you or anyone in this neighborhood or any other neighborhood in the United States. If a government disagrees with our policies, it's because of the United States of America has a government for a long time that oversteps the line and always goes overboard and always says, well, we don't want just what we need, we want more than that. And they hear the people from the United States saying, do you, do you realize what your government is presenting to us as, as a reason why we have to have all this militarism in the world? They're saying you need more than just your quality of life. And on top of that, they're keeping it all for the very top 1%, not even showing you how much wealth you have and how rich you are in your resources. So uh, that's what I think when I guess what Debs might say to that part of your talk, but the renewable energy talk part I greatly appreciate it and thank you for being here. Okay. There's not a huge line of people wanting to rebut tonight. So. Um, I, uh, I'm throwing myself into this. Uh, I was distracted by <laughs> other people at the table, so I didn't catch every word uh, of the uh, 
uh, speaker's uh, uh, talk, but uh, it seems to me uh, uh, there's a few points. Uh, I, I really appreciate trying to um, work for a better world or have ideas um, um, uh, looking uh, to solve the problems of this world. I've certainly spent a lot of my uh, life thinking about that. Um, and, uh, you know, there's, um, um, there's a lot of problems out there. Now, uh, he talks about that if we just had after-school programs or or programs for people getting released on parole and everybody gets a job that gets, you know, released from jail. I, I just don't see uh, how that works. How is that going to um, do anything to correct, you know, like hundreds of years of uh, social cancer that's led to this uh, problem of uh, we have so many dysfunctional people because we have such a dysfunctional system. So, I mean, I appreciate wanting to get a start, but it ain't going to be happening by 2020. Besides, we have this you know, huge obstacle in this uh, in this uh, fascist uh, um, near takeover of our uh, of our government. And so I don't know I don't know where you're going to get with that. And he talks about that he's offering things to Trump. <laughs> Trump. The only thing you're going to get out of Trump is if you bribe him with like 500 million dollars, like China yeah. did. Now, if you've got an in with the guy leading China, and I. I to be honest, I can't pronounce his name. Xi Jinping. Okay, Ping. His last name is Ping. Okay, Ping Pong. You know, I, 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 can, try, I can try to remember it on the basis of back in the ping pong diplomacy of Nixon yeah. and Kissinger. But um, if this Ping, uh, I, I don't know enough about him. I don't know how you can know enough about him. To, I mean, you know, um, you're acting like he's a good guy. He's just trying to uh, make himself the president for life. Uh, like Putin thinks he is, uh, um, all of uh, all of the uh, information from China, and not a lot of it is coming out because it's becoming more and more of a police state. Um, I think we would be lucky um, if, yeah, uh, if we can do anything. We're not going to do anything with China. They're going to do what they are going to do, and uh, we're going to just have to hope that it doesn't come with dictatorship as bad as North Korea's. Um, I don't know, um, as far as, uh, I don't know anyone who knows what's, you know, up with the North Korea situation. Um, basically, um, you have a tin pot dictator here and a tin pot dictator there. And you can't predict what these people are going to do. And I despair when you say glibly that, um, well, if Trump doesn't have the, the North, North Korean part of the peninsula demilitarized, I mean, excuse me, denuclearized uh, by August, uh, that he's going to start a war. I, I hope that doesn't happen. I mean, um, the group I'm with refused fascism that has uh, done so much protest against Trump. Uh, we thought that he was trying to start a, a nuclear war with uh, Korea uh, last year. And uh, thankfully, it has come to pass. But a lot of people are hoping that um, because Trump is just this weird personality that he glories in uh, okay. adulation, that the uh, asking and the adulation that he had a so-called so-called summit um, with this guy um, will maybe maybe carry us through the election. Um, so um, we will see if that prediction comes to um, come to pass. It's doubtful that. Um, most physicists, if you're aware, uh, they don't think that the um, denuclearization of the actual bombs can take place in less than one or two years anyway for technical reasons. Uh, Trump said that himself. He was just repeating something something said to him. But, uh, um, and you know that Kim wants a denuclearization of the entire peninsula. He doesn't want, uh, he doesn't want, what he wants is for the United States to uh, remove any nukes that are in South Korea. And he's really also looking for anything um, that is uh, in Japan to be removed, I'm sure. Uh, anything in the area. And uh, um, so, I mean, I just had a chance to just leaf through this book a little bit. Um, it would take a long time to go through it. Designing win win systems, um, that's a great idea. But um, again, our fellow Trump, he really believes that uh, in negotiation there's a winner and a loser. Uh, this has been pointed out by numerous commentators. 
uh, he likes to win. This particular case, he acted like it was a win-win situation because he loved the fact of palling it up with a dictator. Now, if it's a case of us versus Canada, of course, we have to win and they have to lose. So, go figure. I mean, this whole idea that win-win system, just because you're talking about them as if they're a good thing, they are a good thing. Uh, I agree. We'd love to have them in the world. But uh, to wrap it up, um, it's just wishful thinking. I'm sorry. All right. Um, thanks to the speaker. Uh, my uh, condolences to the speaker for losing his family member. It seemed like a very uh, traumatic event, and he still carries it with him. And I'm sorry to hear that story. Um, some points of uh, uh, that I disagree with. Uh, I Korea. The whole Korean War started because Stalin gave Korea a bunch of weapons to invade South Korea and to take to communize the whole peninsula. The U.S. stepped in, and we propped up the South. And now, uh, like 65 years later, it, China is standing behind North Korea because it's in their area of influence. We're kind of stuck there. These are the. The North is willing to see hundreds of thousands of people starve to, to take as much money as possible to put it into a huge military. I think our best strategy is just containment. Um, anything else is uh, unrealistic. Uh, any crazy threats from our current president to take s military steps is just setting a match to a tinderbox. Uh, prisons. Um, uh, we have an a strange prison system. This country was founded on pure puritanical ideals, and our sense of prison is to punish. You will hear people inject the word uh, rehabilitation into their rhetoric. It is not a system to rehabilitate anyone. And all to, to see this, all you have to do is go to countries where they actually have successful, efficient ways of rehabilitating people so that they become productive members of the society. And we don't have it. And that's the biggest problem you have is fighting the attitude of this country that it's all about punishment. It's a fantasy that we're re trying to rehabilitate people. A work program is great in this country if we have jobs and we have good people who who don't have a felony record, who are trying to get good jobs and they're struggling. So there is a whole host of problems of uh, trying to rehabilitate people, and I just don't think throwing out a number of 2020 is, it is based on any kind of realistic plan to change this country's prison system. Uh, the, the idea that we can be drug-free. Um, I think everybody in this room understands how impossible it is to change the Constitution. But if you go back in time, there is a point, like 120 years ago, where there was talk about changing the Constitution, and we did it. We outlawed alcohol. The whole country believed that alcohol, we could get rid of it by just passing along. And it turned this country into a nightmare. And now, and then they went out and admitted it, and they passed a second constitutional amendment to stop it, because it's a, it's a nightmare. The problem with setting a goal of being drug-free is that it is an impossible goal. Humans have this innate desire to take drugs. They want to drink. They want to smoke pot. They want to do nicotine. Even the natives were doing uh, nicotine and peyote in the Southwest. People just like these mind-altering experiences. The, the, the goal is to not create black markets, which encourages crime. It's to find management tools and laws to limit and minimize and control the problem, like we're doing right now with alcohol. So in, enjoy your drinks if you're having one. Uh, clean energy renewal, uh, uh, the speaker spent a fair amount of time talking about the plan to, to 
in the introduce clean energy with zero details. And as passionate as he is, and I, I certainly like the, th the way he's motivated to change things for the positive, but coming in here and spending time talking about somebody, about some topic, and not <coughs> providing any details is the equivalent of coming in and saying, hi, I have a secret and I'm not going to tell you. It's highly frustrating to hear this. And I will hope that speaker takes this to heart and, uh, and make adjustments to his presentation. So the final, my thought, final thoughts are great ideas, but the devil's in the details. And I haven't heard really any details. Thanks. Six minutes. Um, civilization has been with us thousands of years already. And what is civilization based on mostly? It's based on the fact that some people become very rich and then other people become slaves for the wealthy. And his ideas while he has good intentions, I find very utopian. It doesn't have any grounding in reality. Since the beginning of civilization, what has the Roman or Greek empire or any other empire done except willing to get richer and richer and richer? At first, colonialism they would either take tribute from the people they oppressed or they would make it up in taxes. But the main thing was exploitation. And if you go to the people that control the United States, the real rulers of the United States, talking about industrialists and bankers for the most part. And they have a certain psychology, not because they were born with it, because their way of living conditions that psychology. And what is their psychology? Is to get richer and richer and richer, and there's no end in sight to how rich they, they, can, they can get. In other words, their, their psychological makeup is not that you could go up to them and tell them, oh, I got this clean energy here, and this clean energy is going to make you a lot of money. But their way of living already, which they were brought up with, and their psychology looks in the other direction. They know by exploiting people, and going into other countries and taking away their resources and exploiting them and using them for cheap labor and using them for markets is the way they got rich. And they're not going to uh, change their mind in a minute. You try to get somebody like that, that that type of psychology is almost inborn in them. You're not going to change their minds by coming out with a new theory or something like that. The way people have made progress through the ages is not by government, really. It's by people getting together because they have something in common and fighting against people that are exploiting them by building up their resources of different people coming together and say, well, you've done this and this, and we're not going to uh, vote for you again because then they get the same results. We want changes, and we have to bring about these changes, otherwise we're going to vote you out. So in other words, you got to have counter pressure against ruling classes. And if ruling classes are going to do anything, like done, done under the Roosevelt administration, 
there was this counter pressure. You had people going on strikes, you had people demonstrating in the streets, you had people taking over factories and running them for themselves, and that's why Roosevelt brought about the New Deal. It wasn't because he was a good man or he uh, wanted to do good for the world. He was brought up as a member of the ruling class, and he wanted to make sure the ruling class stood where they were or even got richer. And that was the whole idea. In order to do that, he had to support the unions and things of that nature. But he wouldn't have done it unless there was pressure from below, and that's where progress comes from. Right on. All right. Six minutes. Six minutes. We're giving everybody six minutes. Yes. Some are using less. We're giving these. Some are using less. You got some time to speak tonight. All right. So, um, you know, okay. So, we're gonna have a fellow come up here tonight and talk about thorium energy. Of course. I predict. Well, it's the only way we're going to save the planet. <laughs> and uh, where's our speaker at? It's right there. There. Okay. You got a secret formula to replace oil. Now you got to understand. We go to war for oil. We go to war with oil for hundreds of years now. And jet aircraft, of course, can only fly with jet fuel. They've proven nothing else will work. Soybeans, corn. Switchgrass, you name it. It's got to be jet fuel. JP5. With lots of pollution. You're right, kerosene, whatever. Yeah. Kerosene. yeah. So, and, and it's, they're huge polluters. And, and there's billions of cars now on the road, and there will be billions more. And the most efficient way for them to use energy is gasoline. And as I pointed out last week, catalytic converters only get rid of carbon monoxide. All the other pollutions go in the air. So we got that going for us. That'll keep building up all this air pollution. Seven, seven million people a year die from air pollution in the world. I think most of them in China, <laughs> as it turns out. That's not funny, but you know, we, we love our oil. So um, we're getting a handle on coal, looks like, because we're getting renewables, but still we're going to need coal and nuclear. Uh, thorium probably won't, you know, make it, make the cut. <laughs> anyway, but t Tim, I'm sure will talk about thorium. Yes. So. Anyway, so I would like to know what, how you're going to replace jet fuel and gasoline. Uh, you know, uh, in this country, when we like nice cheap gasoline, with like nice cheap yeah, jet fuel, and chips. we burn a lot of it. We burn a quarter of all of it in the world. Other countries in Europe burn like half of the oil we burn because they have superior transportation systems. Uh, you know, every major city has a CTA. Uh, they have electric bullet trains that use wind power. Um, they're just much more progressive. But big oil, of course, owns this country. You know, I think it's our biggest import still. We import more and more oil than anything else, even from China. So I'm not going to worry about coal and electricity too much because we got thorium, we got wind, we got solar, we got coal, we got gas. And, you know, so we're not, not going to worry about coal since we'll all be on thorium someday. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Anyway, so we got to do something about oil, and my solution is superior uh, Asian, European type transportation systems as options. Okay, so that's my uh, thing on energy. I'd like to know what your secret uh, sauce is here that you're going to get us off of oil. Uh, one quick thing here on, um, uh, on uh, Okay, gangs. Well, in Chicago, of course, we tore down all the projects. So that's hundreds of thousands of people that are moving into 
you know, disadvantaged neighborhoods, so there's going to be gang wars. You won't hear that from mainstream media because they're goddamn stupid. So you tear people out of their homes that they've been living in, Robert Taylor and the Greens, Green the Greens, and you send them into other neighborhoods, you're going to have gang wars. And the goddamn media in this country won't figure that out. And local media is totally inept. Not fake, inept. Okay, medicine, only thing you got to say about that is, I don't know anything about that. Um, then uh, the last thing is, um, there was one other issue I wanted to talk. How much more time do we got? I'm going to take up all six minutes. You got 120, 80 seconds left. All right. Why are you giving people six minutes to talk? Because it's only right now it's uh seven fifty eight. All right, anyway, the main thing is oil and big oil and the problems with oil and war oil wars. And the last thing is You forgot about Wall Street. Very good, Tim. Wall Street. Okay. I don't have a problem with industrialists as much, like the Vanderbilts, the, um, uh, the uh, Carnegies that actually made things. <laughs> I know they were monopolies, like we have monopolies again in this country, at and T's buying up, you know, uh, you know, it's a, just a goddamn joke with all, all the monopolies in this country again. It's like 100 years ago, the Gilded Age. Um, I have a real problem with Obama printing $15 trillion for Wall Street 10 years ago uh, to boost up the economy. We got all these stockbrokers with funny money, uh, not earned money, and you know, we got this casino economy. You know, I came out of Main Street and came out of the manufacturing industries where we made, made stuff, and now China makes everything. And now Trump's, you know, oh, I don't even want to go on. All right. You did good. You did good tonight. And, and, and this North Korea stuff is a big scam just to, just to, just to uh, divert our attention. And Stormy Daniels in town. Hey, Stormy. Hey. All right. American Patriot. She here tonight. She's in Chicago. You know, the thing American Patriot and Hero. The thing is, I have, heard I have heard everybody tonight bash the United States, come up with another solution to save the world, and within six minutes, I'm going to give you mine, part of it. The first reason, and I think a lot of what we can do to get rid of a lot of the social problems within the United States is to get back to something called the family. Uh, mothers and fathers and kids. That is what's ultimately going to get people out of poverty. I understand that there are situations where divorces are cured. I understand there are situations by single mothers and all that. But our culture today basically says, oh, you know, out of the 60s especially, now they're the ones in power you know, free love and radical sex and everything else, it does take its toll after a while. And I really think that if we get back to what we hear in the family of a mother and a father and children, and I mean, I don't even care about the gays or the lesbians or the LGBTQ community, as long as they respect, we respect them, they will respect us. And a long way that goes is to keep the family unit intact. There's something around when a father has sons that is a restraining influence on them. That's point one. And I think it'll go a long way to help the, help the world. And what we need, more churches, more preachers, more people in, entering voluntary programs. And there is a church down on the south side of the city right now, I'm forgetting its name, but it does have a few of these things and has taken a big impact in its programs and affecting it really well. But it's a, I'll, I'll probably remember the name before the speech ends here tonight. Two, yes, we all need uh, to be cooperating around the world. We're already doing it through a system of called globalization. When people are talking and trading, they're not going to fight. And that requires trade agreements. It requires commitments from us. The reason why we haven't had anything happen at, since the end of World War II is we had things like the Marshall Plan. We had things like the World Bank. 
we had some basic infrastructure like the United Nations coming in and letting us settle their disputes. As ineffective as they may have been, they do work. And we can't go around telling our enemies off like Trump is doing right now. Maybe it was a good thing Trump was elected because maybe we'll see now what happens when we elect a bully. Maybe we'll see now what happens when we let things go wrong. Maybe now we'll restore our faith in the liberal democracy like we've started to lose around the world because it's not producing the goods like it is. Our catastrophic financial collapse was a matter of fraud being flushed out of the system. The devaluation of home values, finally Main Street caught up with what the scammer banks were doing. I just finished a book recently called, the, I, it was uh, all about the derivatives and everything from Wall Street and why it went bust. It's really, actually, we can thank God that we had. Can I have a leg, please? Um, and the, the reason I like what happened is that they finally got rid of the fraud out of the system and we're back to somewhat normalcy in Wall Street. Yeah, a lot of those guys are big bankers, but until, we should have had some people go to jail last time for the banking scams. We should have had some people go to jail for perpetrating the scams. And it was just everybody got along. They did not say what was evil. And it just kind of kind of let your mouth shut and we'll follow orders. And that's how widespread fraud can happen. Yes, it still can. We may have forgotten our Nazi heritage. Now, for full energy compliance around the world, we have a problem with global warming. We have a problem with energy independence. We have a problem with dependency on oil. But when I went to the Thorium Energy Alliance uh, convention last year, I heard of a good plan on how to go to a different form of nuclear power that is safe, <laughs> that is reliable, and that works. You can go to the Thorium Energy Alliance homepage pull up a speech by Kirk Sorensen, and he will explain all about it. There's another guy up there too, his name is, um, and this is also on the Thorium Energy Alliance homepage, his name is Richard Martin. He writes a good book on why Rome went down, and it was basically, his premise was the, they needed more power than they did, and all they were using was slave labor. They were so close to developing the steam engine, it was crazy. Now. As to the widespread use of bringing world peace, we do, there, you have to have a power or a group of nations that carries a big stick because there will be nature abhors a vacuum. And right now, like it or not, the United States is still the big boy on the block and we better act responsibly. That means, you know, we, our greatest export up until possibly Trump is screwing it up was security. We were, there was not a ship on the ocean that could move without the impressed specific consent of the United States. Don't believe me? Talk, look up Thomas P. M. Barnett and some of his speeches about how we're getting much more successful at war. Anyway, my time is up. I'll be more than happy to talk about any of this stuff to anybody else. It's a result of thought. And sir, I hope you get a little more on um, You've got the beginnings of some good stuff, but get some more specifics. And please come back. Be back in a few months and I we would love to, okay? Thank I'll you again. You and Charlie. let's give another hand for our speaker. My name is Joe. I'm from the Libertarian Party. By the way, I'll good. be speaking here next week about good. the left wing market and <laughs> um, I just wanted to repeat my, uh, my question a little bit. Um, I still am having a little trouble understanding, uh, Kim, it's not, if it's a renewable in, uh, energy resource that's not dangerous, uh, why releasing it to the public is a concern. Um, I'm kind of, honestly at this point wondering whether, you know, monetary incentive is, is involved here. And I think it's, I just think it's kind of a bad idea to jump to saying that giving a patent to maybe GE is a bad idea because, as I was trying to point out, Tesla didn't patent any of his inventions and wanted them to go to everyone for free, whereas Thomas Edison did patent a lot of his inventions and that kind of created some problems. So I think it's only okay to talk about giving a patent for some new energy resource to some company 
only if we can make sure that company won't be bailed out of taxpayer expense, and only if we drastically shorten the duration of patent uh, the duration of patent protections to something shorter, like 20 years that we had at the beginning of the country, instead of like 120 years that we have now. And so I just want to say, I think renewable energy, having people live, you know, with like low cost energy and health and freedom and equality, I think that's a great thing. I just want to make sure, I, I, I hate seeing progressives water down their message, and this is what I think I'm saying, because they want to make the make the policy seem like it's more likely. I, I saw some appeals, like some people pointed out before me, appeals to militarism, uh, you know, the prison industrial complex, almost bordering on suggesting coerced labor, I'm sorry to even say that. But uh, it does concern me, I think, if they kind of jump to saying central government can, can uh, intervene instead of that we deregulate the energy sector, stop subsidizing energy companies, and let consumers choose, um, then consumers would have more power and they would choose a freer and a less harmful energy source. Um, yeah, thank you. <laughs> I wasn't originally going to come up here tonight because I thought the speaker gave an excellent program and I didn't really see anything that I felt that I needed to refute. However, some of the other speakers left, left a gap there, one in particular. The United States used to be able to recruit top drawer leaders to run this country. Franklin Roosevelt was one of them. Now, they didn't all happen to be wealthy people. The United States was very lucky. For 30 years, from 1933 to 1963, we had four great presidents in a row. One of them, Harry Truman, certainly was not a wealthy man by any stretch of the imagination. And one of them, Dwight Eisenhower, did not come from a wealthy family, though he certainly became wealthy after the Second World War. But the other two were Franklin Roosevelt and John Kennedy. And all four of these people were all genuinely dedicated to the public service and to the public good, and not just for the use of power for its own sake, but what they could do with it to try to help people. And that's why Franklin Roosevelt, and in particular Franklin Roosevelt and John Kennedy were able to connect with the average citizen who, who takes home a welfare check. Who's raising? Who's a mom? Who's raising a single? Who's raising a single family on that welfare check? Or the miners in places like West Virginia. They were able to connect with these people because they get. They were able to get them to understand that yes, if elected, they would try and do something and help them with their problems. And Franklin Roosevelt certainly did that. He saw to it that more Americans got a fair share of what they produced. And he saw to it that the working conditions that they had to deal with became less brutal. I don't say that they were perfect. I don't say that they were that good. But they were less. They were better off than when he, than before he got going with the New Deal. And John Kennedy tried to do the same thing with the New Frontier, but unfortunately, his time was cut too short. And in between, Dwight Eisenhower led this country's post-war expansion, and Harry Truman helped preserve the gains that had been made under the New Deal and kept it from falling apart. And to, and to accuse Franklin Roosevelt of loving power for his own sake, I think that's a slur. Thank you. Very good. First of all, I'd like, my name is uh, Andy Anderson, by the way. I run a free public service and information service out of Valentine. We translate databases of books. If you don't have time to read 50 books on a subject, you can uh, get one of our single-page briefing papers that summarizes thousands of person years worth of work from scientists on that particular subject. And as I mentioned earlier with Censored News, we deal with blacked-out subjects, things reporters are fired for writing about in America. So there's good things going on all over the place that we never hear about in the news. I was struck by listening to some of the comments tonight, and, uh, especially uh, you know from our speaker also. Uh, a scene from a movie came to mind. I don't know how many of you see, saw the Middle Aliens movie in 1986 with Sigourney Weaver. Well, they're on an alien planet and they're hunting for these monsters and they're, they're trying to recover some of their people that were kidnapped by the aliens. And they're being held under this big nuclear reactor complex. And the Marines go in there and they're you know, they all, they're all locked and loaded and everything, and 
Sigourney Weaver is back there with uh, you know the, the lieutenant back at the command center, and she says, look where your team is. He says, what do you mean? He said, well, they got live weapons and grenades and everything else. They're right under the cooling tower with all the pipes for that thermonuclear reactor. They puncture a couple of those pipes and this whole planet goes up in four hours. She said, look where your team is. Well, that's, you have to watch the movie to get the essence of it. The second best movie that describes, look where we are now. What can we do now in, in, in the time we have? And that movie is Dr. Strangelove, for those of you that haven't seen it. Um, describing uh, thorium or any kind of new, new nuclear plant as a solution to our energy crisis is like describing a new blood clotting agent that will seal up wounds very sharply uh, you know, without surgery. A person is brought into an emergency room with an artery that's cut and the doctor says, uh, you yeah, know, what can we do? He said, well, I've got this clotting agent. It'll be ready in two years. Just hold your hand on it for two years so you don't bleed to death. In the amount of time it would take to build a few dozen reactors, get them tested, and get them up and running, they would give us one one-thousandth of the energy we need, and it would be five years too late to keep the ice from melting at the North and the South Pole. Uh, you, in order to promote nuclear power as an energy source, any kind of nuclear power, it's the most expensive way to boil water that's known to man. And uh, people that continue to promote various kinds of nuclear energy are simply ignoring the timetable. How about Number talking two? to Kirk Sorensen at Flybe Energy? Uh, or at Thorcon up I'll, in Canada? I'll, look, I'll do the research on that and, and, and give you the rebuttal. But, uh, nuclear power, the idea that it can provide any kind of help for the future, has been dead since 1985, but the carcass of the dinosaur is still flopping around, being flop, flop, propped up with welfare from, uh, you know, no nuclear power plant in the world has ever made money. They've all been losers propped up by welfare from taxpayers. That's a documented fact. That's not an opinion. It's not pie in the sky. Number two, I would point our speaker and everybody else the two of the most hopeful websites I know of on the internet. One of them is Rocky Mountain Institute, RMI.org. Okay, and that's the world's premier energy efficiency institute with ideas for moving toward a clean, green future in what's called the least cost energy strategy. The other website is the single most hopeful site I know of because it has 12 different disciplines, medicine, uh, global warming, the solutions to it, uh, solutions uh, moving everybody toward peace. Their motto is, we're working for a brighter future. That website is called wanttoknow.info. I have cards with these portal websites on for anybody that wants one. But at any rate, both of those sites, on, on the Want to Know Info site, there's a, uh, in the energy, energy sector, there's the 100 new the best hundred new energy machines that can help us get off of fossil fuel and nuclear power. And the authors are offering, they, they have uh, descriptions of the machines uh, to uh, give people a general idea of what it is. And uh, they're working with uh, as many you know governments as they can to move this forward. Incidentally, high mileage cars are for sale outside the United States. You can't buy a 70 mile per car in another country and import it here. It's illegal. They, uh, the fossil fuel industry owns and operates the largest in intellectual whorehouse in the world. And that intellectual whorehouse is our Congress. The Senate and the Congress is the smoothest running, best financed intellectual whorehouse on the planet. And these people, as I held up that book on climate crime, these people are paid to lie to us. That's their job, and the Republicans came out and said that. That's why 278 out of 286 Republicans in Congress, they all say uh, they deny the climate change. There's no climate change, no climate change, because they've been told by the Koch brothers, we'll run you, somebody in the primary, and your job is gone in 14 months if you don't actively promote climate denial. The billionaire Koch brothers and others have the, the billions of dollars to remove any congressman or senator that steps out of line. The Republican Party has been weeding itself, purifying itself, and weeding out anybody with ethics, morals, and a conscience since 2000, or probably before that. But it's, it's picked up speed. The last thing I would like to say, 
most of us, well, most of us consider ourselves relatively intelligent. Intelligent, at least average of intelligence, and most of us don't consider to have psychic ability. So we don't have the psychic ability to separate someone like you that may have a really workable idea from the other 999 charlatans that say, I got a good idea, I got a piece of a bridge to sell you, just sign the check here. And if you present an idea without giving any details at all, you're going to turn off 99.9% .9 of the people that might say, hey, that's a good idea, let's get by and fund it. So uh, if, if you haven't had luck up until now getting people to accept a new idea, you have to give them some details and let them know that it's got some basis in scientific credibility rather than just the Ponzi scheme people that have been bilking America for the last 40 years, right? Is that understandable? Absolutely. And so that Which would is be... Which why you're going to have me back. Yeah. Well, that, yeah. That, that would be yeah. why I would... Uh, and also the, the one thing... If you're talking about some kind of new energy source that can be used to make bombs, intelligent world leaders are going to rule that out right up front because uh, if, if, it's, if it's inherently dangerous, that's going to be separate. Martha Stout wrote a book called The Sociopath Next Door. She said 4%, 1 in 25 is a sociopath. One, that's Martha Stout, book came out a few years ago, 1 in 25 is a sociopath, and we have billionaire sociopaths. If you give them, them the means to profitably kill a large amount of people with a new energy source, they will. And the world has crazy people in it, that's why since 1979 some of the best bomb designers have been on the anti-nuclear trail since 79, recognizing that once you get an H-bomb down to the size of a cantaloupe that you can carry around in a purse, and you give that to crazy people, you got big problems. And so, you know, finally, uh, nobody in their right mind is gonna fire a missile in the air. We got satellites. If you fire a missile in the air toward the United States, there's 15 different satellites that are gonna pinpoint right where it came from, from the moment it was launched, and that country can be turned to a glassy parking lot by a few submarine launch nukes. So this is all for countries want to have one or two nukes so that you can't attra attack them as being defenseless. The United States doesn't attack people that are defenseless. They, I mean, they, they, they can defend themselves. That's what this is all about with the Middle East. So uh, I, I let, 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 let countries have one or two nukes with the understanding that you know there's no first use anywhere and we can scale back 95, 98% of ours. But at current prices today, everybody should be aware, solar and wind power are cheaper than fossil fuel anywhere on the earth. Any source of fossil fuel, shale, uh, fracking, all that stuff is now more expensive. The cost curve came down just like cheap cell phones, cheap cameras. Tim, Tim's got a camera that used to cost $5,000. A while back, right? Right. Now there are 200, 300. You know, and cell phones are cheap, and solar panels have gone through that. So, eighteen hundred dollars in solar panels 20 years ago, that amount of wattage cost you about 150 bucks a day. And ComEd is getting ready to finance solar roofs all over Chicago <laughs> because that's a cheaper source of electricity than running their nukes. They're also stations. putting on a big solar field out in McKinley so County. So, uh, you know, the future belongs to solar and wind. I hope to publish, republish a book I published 10 years ago called the light at the end of the tunnel. It's a fireball. We're going to embrace the fusion reactor out there. We're going to see little fireballs going off over the, all over the earth as people begin to fight for resources that are not being made available to us by the fossil fuel industry. We have billionaire predators running this country right now, and that's, we have to deal with that in real time. So I would say all of you, log on to Rocky Mountain Institute, rmi.org, or the Want to Know Info site, other than Common Dreams that gives you the best advice every day. Thank you. All right. All right. Uh, our speaker, do you want to go? you want to say something? Then we'll let you go. Okay. I forgot what they picked you for. <laughs> um, no, no, no. You know, it's beautiful to have uh, capitalism and democracy. If, can you imagine capitalism without democracy? 
Yeah. How would it look like? It's called Nazi Germany. Hey, get out. Nazi Germany. Get out. Uh, they were full of acids. Keep they, going. That was without democracy. Um, but what? Think it of uh, another way. What if? Uh, what if capitalism can buy democracy? Isn't that something that is happening? Uh, 99 came from where? Wow, we felt the pinch. Somebody is buying the government. We don't particularly like that. And if, it, if there was no democracy, Capitalism will be out of control, and we will be in pretty sorry state. Now, about this uh, nuclear energy and atom bombs and all that, um, the speaker said that uh, we have to respond to North Korea and Iran the way we did because of appeasement. What the hell were we doing all this time with Russia and China and the biggest and Pakistan and India? We were facing them with appeasement. And uh, but if they are smaller than that, then I think our approach is more than appeasement. Uh, one thing you know we, we cannot forget. The electric cars came out from the very beginning, early 1900s. And uh, because oil has become so cheap that, that their development wasn't continuing. Now we are in the balance between cheap oil and developing electric cars. Do you remember those trains that we had in here that were running on railroad tracks? guided by electricity, and, uh, and and what happened to them? That was clean energy. And what happened to, to that? Why did we change, abolish them all together and went with the bus industry and started the purchasing bus? Anybody in here? Back in the 40s and 50s, wasn't it? Why Trol they called trolley cars. That was in the late 50s. Late 50s. Yeah. What was the question? Yeah. And the, the energy that did the, the, the electricity yeah. wasn't yeah. clean. Yeah. It was a clean energy, wasn't it? Yeah. 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 The yeah. energy that made the electricity yeah. wasn't yeah. clean. Oh, oh. 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 the auto industry yeah. wanted to build Well, it's still uh, not too many fuses were coming out. Not from the trolleys, but from the. <laughs> well, just as an example that I. Uh, Keep the, the, the balance, check and balances between capitalism and uh, democracy. Because the ones that eventually won in getting rid of those trains that were not polluting the air, producing the electricity in comparison to the, all the fumes we get now from all the, it, there is no comparison. So, the, the one company, I, I read this a long time ago, but the one company that was involved in, in this project was Firestone. And there is another one. It was two tire companies that had... buses and Standard Oil. Really? General Motors. Standard Oil too. I thought it was just the bus. No, the oil company. oil. The tire companies were the first ones I thought that they would have the biggest push. So, you know, if something is going to be going for the better, and it's not going, and, and there are huge, very wealthy, powerful companies, they can actually give you a little trouble with your program. And, and so, <laughs> good luck. I hope you overcome them. Because they really. There is other organizations that I wouldn't mention that uh, have practically are taking over the country, but uh, that's about what I wanted to say. I hope somebody has uh, ideas along that line. Just think of the balance of power. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
to rebut. All right, get the last word and. Uh, last words was a thorough. There, there's a lot to go through, and a lot of people said a lot of things. Um, I mean, I thought you were going to mention the things that you did. Okay, well, it's fine. I, I, you know, once the ship is shared, which will be, you know, before the election, um, I'll be happy to come back and do it. Two take-home messages for today, if nothing else, and, and it's not directly related. Number one, appeasement does not work. Yeah, ask yeah, Neville Chamberlain, yeah. ask Joe Stalin. They found out the hard way. And But I will tell you, science does work. I heard a lot of things here that are more ideology than with science. 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 That's what gave you this. That's what gave you solar panels and where the price went down. <laughs> That's all science. And so science works time and time again. Um, and in, in your criticisms, it's always good. So absolutely, if I can't prove what I'm saying, that ain't science. Science proves what it says. So I'll have to come back. But that's just because I want it used for the right purposes and it, it denuclearizing North Korea and, uh, and uh, Iran in the next few months. Months. Make sure you define acid we have before you. Make sure you define acid before you start using what your do you terms. Define acid. Acid. Acids. Acids. Acid. Acid. A C I D. Acids. He means acids. A S S E T S. Oh, I can't. I'm, I'm deaf in one ear. What? Oh. Define what? What you said. Define the, the term acid before you start using it. A S S E S. Acids. Oh, acids. Arrogant stupidity. Oh my. God. <laughs> Arrogant stupidity and systematic abuse of power. Acids. Arrogant, I did, but but I know there's a lot there. Anyway, so um, so science works. Um, it's the seven Chinese philosophers with their part of the elephant. It's not one person's right and another person's wrong. It's, it's you need to see the overview. And unfortunately, a lot of things discussed here were just parts of the elephant. You need to see the overview, and that's what good science does. Uh, so um, so that by the way, with global warming and uh, oceans rising, if you take that water and you, you you go through the Great Lakes and put it back in the aquifers where it could do some good, <laughs> that's good science too. So, you know, and by the way, I'm all for good wa global warming, uh, it's rather not have to shovel snow. Okay, so, um, so bottom line is that uh, um, we can move things forward. Um, in terms of drug uh, drug treatment, I'll tell you the story. Shanghai used to be, you know, people were Shanghai. And um, after the revolution, Mao came in and he said, look, you, you to all the people in the drug dens, you know, you're either going to stop or you're going to be dead. And, and within a week, they were either dead or they were in rice paddy therapy, but they got rid of the problem in a week. And, and empirically, I'm, I'm talking science, empirically, <laughs> The drug, the, you know, all the opium dens, and by the way, the British were all for the opium dens because they were making the money. So I mean, it's not you know capitalism. So the point is, so though that it, this is nothing like that. Having people work is the best thing you can do. You talked about families. Um, rights without responsibilities is called entitlement. It's terrible. Right with responsibilities is called empowerment. It's essential. That's what we um, need to do. FDR said that AFDC, which he put in in 1933, was like a narcotic. You, if you gave kids uh, candy, said don't, uh, you use all candy, with, uh, but don't get cavities. Um, but if you get cavities, you don't have to work, you don't have to do anything. Well, support the rest of life. Guess what happened in the incidence of cavities? The same thing. So if you tell people you have to work, and by the way, if you have kids, you have to pay for them. And I mentioned the daycare program, but any work program, guess what happens to out of, out of wedlock pregnancies? And by the way, the, you, you, you nail it. You know, so, so there is a solution, and most importantly, is you have two parent families, which is exactly what you said, exactly what you said. And so there are solutions to these things that don't go, you know, 20 years in the future, just look to what we did. This, these are things that were there all along, and around the world, these things happen right now. So appeasement doesn't work, science does. It should be the, the big take home message. Uh, and uh, so rice paddy therapy, you know, just everybody work. 
that will take care of it. And if the kids know that if they screw around, they're just going to spend more time in school, not less, and yes, they're going to make sure that they do their homework, and they're not going to be the lookouts, and they're not going to be yes. doing gangs and drugs. Um, they're going to make, and guess what happens to education levels? You know, and, and to the extent that the number one um, predictor of a child's academic performance is that money is not the number of kids in a class, it's parental involvement. And if these, empirically, this is science again. So you can do these things by getting the parents, parents, plural, involved. And so all of these things are not only possible, they're essential. So yes, we can. Uh, the chief judge for Cook County is Tim Evans. He said, and we talked two years ago, now start with the kids. So if we have the after school program by August on a bipartisan basis, and, and that we can do this. I will come back and do, I will just tell you one last thing. Sylvia uh, had an IQ of 185, um, was a mystery writer. Within a, uh, the day Obama announced for the uh, presidency, I called Sylvia and said, send them 50 bucks, that's a lot of money for us. And, and Sylvia, being Sylvia, even though she was a Hillary supporter, sent them 100. So, but she was a scientist, she was a mystery writer. And, and so she found out that a guy named Larry Sinclair had a YouTube science um, site where he talked about having had uh, used cocaine and had sex with Obama. And uh, he talked with uh, a guy, so Larry Sinclair was trying to shake him down, uh, who talked to a guy called Don Young uh, at the uh, Obama headquarters. Obama was the openly gay choir director of Reverend Wright's church they talked for several months. We got the phone, phone logs and everything. Um, finally, Larry, uh, Don Young said, no, they're not going to do anything. Get as far away as possible. Don Young ended up seriously dead execution style on December 23rd of 2007. 2007. And if Mayor Daley's nephew took 10 years, guess what the Chicago Police Department have never investigated. So it's coming out. If you can talk about uh, Stormy Daniels, then you may as well talk about Obama and the murder of Don Young. You can talk about uh, Ted Kennedy and Mary Jo Kopechny. You can talk about JFK and Marilyn Monroe. But let's stop the double standards. And so to the extent that comes out, uh, the, issues about, uh, the issues about the Global Energy Independence Program and ASSES, the usual word, and I'm sorry I'm deaf, but uh, arrogant, stupidity, and systematic abuse. That's the third thing, because that's the biggest killer in, in the world. A thing we can prevent, and we can prevent it in the next uh, uh, decade, and that should be our goal. A Peace on Earth by 2030. Yeah. That's the back title of the book, and that's what can be done. So that's uh, hopefully things will be done. But be scientists, be scientists. Question authority, question everything, but, but look at the results, not just ideology. Okay, Andy, close us out. He doesn't go into the microbiome, but uh, that book can give you hope. I had not, I hope it's on the table. Oh, you can What's that? Not, I tried to write it down, but I'm sure I screwed up. So why don't you write it down? Worthwhile even mentioning that goes on prevention. No, that's good. That's good. And uh, the, that's why we should be looking at, you know, because it's not in the interest of the to be emphasizing prevention. They could be out of a job. But, but uh, as an individual, including myself, I, you know, just because I keep on this, yes, it is. And that's what Tim has you spell it a hundred ways. Milwaukee Avenue from Milwaukee City. And I have hired a lot of the 